All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Hay Bike Ranger. This is a 20 inch fat tire electric bike that folds. It's got the step through feature, so it's easy to get on and off. Uh, this is, I believe, their latest model from a new company. Hay Bike is, uh, only has like four miles, I believe. This is their newest one with the most range, biggest battery, and probably the most features of any of their e bikes. I think this is uh, more of a, an advanced version of their previous model of the Mars. So it has a 500 watt geared hub motor in the back here. Pretty standard uh, for a 20 inch electric bike in this price class. You have a mechanical disc brake in the back, 160 millimeter rotor. Also another 160 millimeter mechanical disc brake in the front. I do like these 20 inch mag wheels. So um, instead of spokes, they got these mag wheel, mag style wheels here that are you don't have to worry about uh, maintaining your spokes or fixing damage it's got this nice folding mechanism here in the middle um fairly well it's not super easy to fold up but uh it's not terribly difficult either it's pretty standard for a folding bike of this weight class it does weigh about 70 pounds the pedals do fold up as well so in the back here you have this pretty strong sturdy cargo rack this is included in the price. You don't have to uh, buy this as an add-on. This bike is rated for up to 330 pounds. So if you get one of those little bags in the back here that, that has the things that hang on the side, you should be able to carry um, a quite a bit of extra cargo here. So for those of you that use these sort of e-bikes for doing errands, you know, grocery shopping, that kind of thing, uh, this bike is gonna be right up your alley. So if you want to carry extra cargo, uh, there are attachment points here in the front of the bike uh, for attaching a metal basket for more cargo. So that basket is not included as an extra cost. So they don't include that because they're not sure that everyone's going to be wanting to carry that much cargo in the front. Also in the front here, we have a front fork suspension. You have a lockout mechanism here and also an adjustment mechanism to you know, basically decrease and increase the strength. You have a light here in the front. So in the back here, you have a seven speed Shimano uh, tourney derailleur. It's an entry level derailleur, works fine. Uh, nice silver chain. You have a little guard here in the front of the derailleur. So if you do have a basket attachment here or something on the side, it's not gonna be hitting the derailleur, which is nice. Okay, so in the uh, handlebar here in the front, you have your light uh, button here, turns the headlight in the front on and off. You have a horn, it's pretty loud. Uh, you have your um, controller here for your settings on the screen, uh, plus and minus for the pedal assist settings. On off button here is on the bottom. And then you have your buttons here to control the menus uh, if you wanna change your settings. And then the uh, shifter here is a Shimano shifter, pretty standard on almost these e-bikes. You have a thumb throttle here on this model instead of a twist throttle, so, um, I kind of wish that they would give you an option of one or the other, but um, this one has the thumb throttle, not the twist throttle, but the grips, the handle grips are really nice here. It's like this faux leather, very comfortable, soft. Um, you know, this is a, you know, no, 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 no need to uh, worry about swapping these out. Yeah, so back again here in the front, you have all your cables are very neatly uh, bundled up. And then you have this uh, neoprene wrap that goes around the cable bundle here. Um, keeps it nice and neat and out of the way. The seat here is uh, like a memory foam seat. It's pretty nice for this price range. It does come with a suspension post. It's uh, entry level suspension post. It's okay. I think you could probably get something better for a lot more money, but uh, for the price and the fact it's included, it does make the ride pretty nice, especially with the 20 inch tires. So the battery on here is a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery and gives you a range, I think, of oh, oh, 45 miles, I believe. Uh, I think that's the estimated range, uh, probably on the lowest pedal assist settings. The battery is removable, and you charge it through this little port over here on the side. On the top of the battery, you do have a button here to show you the battery charge. You can't take the battery out with this key. You have to unlock it and turn it off, and then you lift up on this handle. Just pop up the seat with this little uh, handle here. And then you should be able to go ahead and pop out the battery. And then they do include this nice uh, water bottle holder here in the front. And 
Uh, last but not least, the kickstand here is a pretty hefty kickstand. Uh, this e-bike does weigh about 70 pounds, so having a, a nicer kickstand like this is going to make sure the bike's not going to fall over. All right, so to turn the bike on, just press this button here on the bottom of this little control pad. Turn that on. The screen turns on here. So the screen is fairly readable even in bright light, but in super bright sunny conditions, it is a bit washed out. Um, so you have to kind of shade it up a little bit here so you can see it. Got a full battery charge here. This is your battery uh, meter here in the upper left. Get your speedometer here. Power or the pedal assist level here it goes from zero to three on the stock settings. You can go into the advanced settings and adjust that. I, I think you can change it um, from zero to nine, I believe. And then you can adjust the percentage of uh, motor output that you get at each level. That's all customizable. I'm not going to cover that in this video. If you want to see something uh, in more detail on that, let me know in the comments and I'll cover that in a future video. Down here you got your trip odometer as well as your regular odometer. You can, you can cycle through with the buttons on the side of the control pad here. So there are, on the stock settings there's basically three levels of pedal assist. At pedal assist level zero there doesn't do anything. It does just have the bike on and keeps your keeps track of your speed and, and your mileage. Uh, but there's no motor assistance. At level one that's when the motor assistance kicks in and you have Basically, for each uh, additional level of assistance, you get more speed. Um, so we'll go ahead and get on the bike here, take it for a ride, and I'll tell you how fast it goes at each of the different pedal assist levels. All right, so I'm gonna start off in pedal assist level one and from a cold stop, go and go. Okay, so we're about to 12 miles per hour. So we're about a little over 12 miles an hour right here um, on level assist number one. All right, turning around, let's go to level assist number two. All right, we're about topping out at about 17 miles per hour. All right, so we're now in level three. Uh, about 20 miles an hour. Anyway, the speed might be limited to 20 miles an hour. Um, there might be a way to unlock it to get to 25 miles an hour, or it could be that I'm just too heavy for the bike at about 200 pounds. So I'm now using the uh, thumb throttle, pedaling and I'm going, it's giving me the max speed at about 12 miles an hour. But I am in uh, gear, the highest gear, gear seven. When I drop down into a lower gear, I run out of pedal basically, and it just basically the uh, the pedals are freewheeling as if they're like basically it sounds like this, as if I'm not pedaling. So it doesn't. It seems like if you're in a lower gear, you're at least in pedal system number one. You're not really doing anything to help the motor out. It's just the motor's doing all the work. Let's see what happens when we go to uh, assist level number two. And yeah, I'm running out of pedal. I'm running out of pedal already. See, I'm pedaling, but you can hear that it is freewheeling. So this is uh, pretty common with a lot of e-bikes. I think um, the motors are too powerful for the gearing. So you run out of pedal pretty quickly. Uh, um, so if you're if you're going to be going any faster than uh, say about 12 miles an hour, you're going to run out of pedal around 14 miles an hour, at least on the current settings. You can obviously change the settings if you want. And this is on a level surface. If you're going uphill, of course, uh, you're probably going to not run out of pedal, or at least not run out of pedal as quickly. 
All right, let's see how it does over grass. So they're definitely slowing down a little bit here. And, uh, no problem, this is obviously all terrain. You can go off road, you know, to a limit of course, but it seems to be fine. So riding over grass and pedal assist level one is, uh, you get about 10 miles an hour, nine, 10 miles an hour. Don't seem to run out of pedal. Even at lower gears. I'm on gear three right now. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, actually just pedal here and uh, there's no pedal assist, level zero. Gonna go a little slower and so I can talk about the riding characteristics of the bike. I, I, even in the level assist one, it gets up to about 12 miles an hour, a lot of wind. And uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me, so I'm gonna just kind of ride it a little slower here. Overall, the um, fat tires, of course, and the fork suspension in the front, along with the seat post suspension, really makes this a smooth ride. Um, probably up there in terms of, you know, comfort. Um, compared to a lot of e-bikes that maybe don't have a suspension. Obviously the, the, the four inch wide fat tires make a big difference in terms of the comfort of the ride. With regards to the uh, uh, running out of pedal, you can probably make some adjustments in the advanced settings to reduce the motor output at the uh, lower, you know, I think, I think uh, at pedal assist one, it's already at 70%, so maybe you can adjust that down so that if you want to ride with other bicycles that are slower and have the pedal assist but not have the speed, you're going to have to do that. So let me know if you want to see a video about that later. The uh, seat post suspension is okay. It, it definitely takes the bumps out that are transmitted even through the tires, especially if you're going to be going off road, but on smooth surface like this, uh, like a street sidewalk asphalt, um, not really that noticeable. I think that the fat tires enough are going to be good enough for uh, going on roads like this where they're pretty smooth. So I'm not sure, you know, if you want to get a different seat, switch it out for something that doesn't have a uh, seat post suspension. It's probably going to be just fine for smoother surfaces. So in conclusion, I think this is a pretty uh, good bike overall, uh, very versatile could use it for a lot of different everyday situations, commuter bike, off-road bike. Um, it's very easy to ride, obviously easy to get on and off. So I think for those of you that are perhaps older and maybe don't like the uh, the high bars on a lot of e-bikes, the, the step-through feature on this one is definitely going to be a plus. The bike itself came very well packaged and was very easy to assemble. So I didn't actually cover any of the assembly instructions in this video because the manufacturer already made a very good video on how to put the bike, bike together and that's what I followed. I'll link that video down in the video description. So in the end, this bike is very good at a lot of things. It's not great at, at certain stuff. You know, it's not definitely not the fastest. It doesn't have the most range, but you know, for all the different features and functions that it has, it's definitely above average for all those. So it's certainly it justifies the uh, $12.99 price on the e-bike. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. How does this bike compare to some of the ones that you've ridden before in terms of uh, what it can do? Hope you found the video helpful and I will talk to you guys in the next one.